So here, first of all, OSL layer. Okay. Open system. Interconnect. Open system. Interconnect. OSI. Yes, lot of people think OSI layers are new one or maybe a TCP IP is new one. Okay. TCP IP is new one. So which is the advantages? OSI layers are used by only some companies. Or uh, OSI layers are uh, special companies, difficult to use, very old. Okay. A lot of things are there. No, guys, it is a reference model. It is created based on the understanding of different models. Means all network models are came earlier than OSC only. So OSC layer is a reference model for understanding and creating and troubleshooting the network. It contains seven layers contains seven layers. This OSA model is standardized by ISO, means it is an organization. ISO is a, an organization will give standards. Okay, standards like ISO certificates. So ISO given a standardization to this OSA. Okay, that is just a, it's saying it is a standard model. International organization for Standardization. Okay. Next one. There is a I3BLE general number is there. So I3BLE, yet not to represent network, mainly LAN kind of network. Okay. Yet not to dot, yet not to means your Ethernet. 802.3 means your Ethernet. Okay, your Ethernet frames comes under 802.3 means your general Ethernet. Okay, 802.11 means your wireless network. Okay, it is a wireless network. 802.11. 802.11 is a part of I3BLE, yet not to set up local area network technical standards and specifies that uh, set of media access control and physical kind of stabilization, right? So whatever it is, 802.11 represent Wi-Fi network. You know, A, N, B, C, D, it is represent a different uh, type of frequencies and bandwidths connectivity okay so those are the network standards so you can say as here you can also put this one so i will put it here yet not to means ethernet no, no, yet not to means it's a local network kind of stuff local area network this is a ethernet standard in this one also we have a other abcd kind of stuff so just i am giving basic standard 802.11 in 11 also a is there b is there g is there n is there d is there okay so this is wi-fi means wireless Wi-Fi, just for a basic understanding. Okay. Okay. So this is about your voice. Guys, voice layer having a seven layers. You know, if you are unable to remember the seven layers, like you have a fear of forgetting these seven, seven, la seven layers. No problem, guys. Just by heart it. Don't forget. Compulsory. Remember, it is a standard questions. 
you know basics of networking means these are all standard questions only that's why i am trying to keep telling everything repeatedly one points again and again and again because we feel these are a very small things we have to prepare very big thing means like a, like a cloud computing ml al kind of stuff but point is of course for our interview not only in interview guys the basic standards were very important to do anything in a higher level also lower or higher whatever it is okay so learn proper again we have a seven layers in osi you can read these layers from top to bottom or bottom to top in some people from some colleges textbooks they have a different hobbies of telling so like a application layer presentation layer session layer transport layer network layer data link layer and physical layer or some people are having a hobby of reading like this physical layer data link layer network layer transport layer session layer presentation layer and application layer some people get a doubt which is the correct order guys do not jumble these orders do not jumble this thing but whatever the order it is correct 7 to 1 or 1 to 7 means application layer to physical layer or physical layer to application layer whatever the order it is correct only but do not interchange the order do not interchange the order okay so as some place like you can see i have an hobby of telling these seven layers from application layer to physical layer okay so any which ways the first three layers we call it as a upper layers meaning is application layer presentation layer session layer or upper layers or software layers network layer data link layer physical layer means last three layers or hardware layers or a bottom layers top layer or upper layers bottom layers or the the middle one is transport layer is not comes under uh, software or hardware in general it is software type only it provide end to end connectivity out of voice layer transport layer is a provide end to end connectivity out of voice layer application layer presentation layer session layer transport layer network layer data link layer physical layer okay and we discussed about it devices see this is layer 1 device physical layer hub layer 2 data link layer example is switch layer 3 network layer it is router okay so the hardware layer software layer part of voice layer okay guys so knowing about each and every layer is important the first one is is a application layer of course as a part of application layer and as part of protocols and port numbers i am all giving this information compulsory to know the certain protocols and their port numbers it is important we have a protocols guys we have a protocols every communication every type of communication it is we use protocols like i am open a web browser and i open a website 
So then I use a protocol called HTTP or HTTPS protocol. Okay. So with this protocol only, the server will understand what is your request. What is your the request? Okay. You want to ping to some PC. I don't know what network I am connected currently, so then I am checking. Yeah, I connected to an, uh, a network. So 192.168.0.131. For example, I want to ping to some device, either in, within my LAN network, outside of my network. And now I am pinging to google.com. So by IP address part, I am pinging to google.com. That's go, of course, I got an IP address. First of all, I got a google.com IP address from DNS server. To get an IP address of this google.com, to get an IP address of google.com, there is a protocol called a DNS protocol. Of course, DNS server is giving you this IP address. The request is a DNS request. Next, I'm pinging, right? I'm pinging. I'm pinging to the IP address, then I'm getting a reply, right? I'm pinging. Pinging means ICMP protocol. ICMP protocol. So then only the remote system understand your request is ping based request, echo request, of course. Okay. Similarly, different type of communications like a mail communication web communication file kind of communication you know it is date and time came now so we are we can able to see that date and time adjust date and time okay we can synchronize the time with this time server time dot windows dot com time dot windows dot com you are synchronizing time with this server based on your time zone. You change your time zone, time will be changed automatically. So why? Because the first it's a time zone and the time. Okay, the time will be set based on your time zone from this time dot windows dot com. That is a NTP server. Protocol is NTP protocol. You can access a remote server, remote device using remote access protocol like SSH, Telnet, and RDP. Okay, guys. So you have a server and a client, or you have a two devices, the server or client, and whatever it is, you have a two devices, or a, you have a server and client. To communicate between, or a you are you are a send a request and you will get that information from it like how you are uh, the type of communication understandable by protocols only if you see there is a pca and there is a server a two devices server a is a web server not a mail server it is a web server so you send a request from PCA, HTTP request. Server A understand PCA request. It's a HTTP request. Yes, it is a web related request. And it give, give a response like a with a web page kind of stuff. There is a web server. I send a HTTP request. So I will get a HTTP response. Okay, I will get a HTTP response. If in case that is a web server, I send a mail related request, SMTP request. Okay, I send a mail request. What server will do it? It's the server is does not know about a mail communication. It drop the packet. For example, it is a Gmail server. It will understand your mail request. 
it is uh, something other kind of server like youtube server it is it does not understand what is your request right so server client understanding client re request giving re response to the client by the protocols only okay there is a different type of protocols are there here it is some protocols are listed here try try to understand remember their port numbers also is always best guys understand protocols use of protocols Sir, your voice is not audible. Because I'm not talking. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just given a one second pause to give anybody will give some response or something. Okay. So this is a protocols and port protocols. Here it is some protocols and port number guys. HTTP and HTTPS both are for a web communication. Okay, you can send HTTP or HTTPS request. So means you are asking for a web page. Web related communication. Where we use web browser. Which protocol HTTP or HTTPS. Which server web server. Okay. So then here it is a port number. 80 and 443. So what is the difference between HTTP and HTTPS? Yes, of course. Secure. Very good. Secure. Okay. So how it is secure? You have a HTTP. Of course, this is also HTTPS only. Well, you are transmitting a data from your client to server and server to client. The data is in HTTP. Whatever the data it is, it is in the normal format. Okay, normal format. So if anyone is in between you and your server, capture the packets so they can read what data is transmitting between the server and the client or a client to the server. If in case it is a banking email or some secure information is there, so data will be leaked to everyone. Okay, so if anyone is sitting and capturing the data, so obviously we can get the data. What is the data we send and we receive? That is HTTP. HTTPS. While you are sending or are receiving a data, the data is encrypted. Data is encrypted. Okay. HTTP or SSL. So using SSL or TLS certification, SSL or TLS methods to, to encrypt the data. Uh, last time uh, for your batch or another batch, I didn't remember, but I showed something like a MD5 is a uh, also. Uh, encryption method we use it but it is now very easy to crack it okay so for example here it is i put a hello okay this is a hello normal text but if you encrypt data shows like this in sha1 hash data show like this okay original string is hello after encryption data is like this can you able to understand with this only this part? You look at this one. We don't understand what is this data. Okay. okay so here what I am trying to do is. I'll copy this. And I want to paste it here. And decrypt. Okay, luckily we have uh, not required to do any logins kind of stuff at present. It is pre-searching is there. 
once it is found, the name is originally hello. Of course, that's why I showed MD5 because we can able to encrypt and decrypt kind of stuff. Both are possibilities there. Okay. It is I generated a encrypted part here and decrypted here with the same kind of technique, same kind of coding. It is. The original encryption is what happened like that, guys. It is a very strong encryptions they use, like a SHA 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 256, 1024, uh, different type of 2048 encryption methods, like uh, keys with the key encryption is also there. Easy to understand, simple WhatsApp messaging. I send a message. The message is encrypted here. Message is showing here. But it is while it is transmitting, message is encrypted. Message is encrypted. And uh, other place, other person, those who are at the receiving side, they can also view the data. Receiving side can view the data. Sending side can able to view the data. But between this sender and receiver, data is encrypted that is called a end-to-end -end encryption so nowadays we are all using maximum the website kind of stuff are https only why because of the data security so data should not be compromised while you are transmitting and receiving data that is the difference between http and https and encryption understand the encryption part both are for accessing websites, web, web kind. So there is a HTTPS website you can access with the HTTPS only. HTTP website can able to access with the HTTP only. So compulsory use protocol, same protocol. FTP 2021. In FTP also we have a SFTP, VSFTP also there. For securing, secure, very secure file transfer protocol, secure file transfer protocol. The FTP is file transfer protocol. SSH, Telnet, RDP. Three are a remote access purpose. SSH and Telnet, both are for a remote access with a CLI type interaction. Command line interface. Uh, type of communication it is text based communication it is rdp is the gui based means complete uh, the desktop environment we can able to access complete remote device remote pc complete remote uh, desktop we can able to so that desktop we can able to access that is called a remote desktop protocol rdp remote desktop protocol it is also encrypted, so direct encryption is there. So 3389 protocol, port number. Yes, SSH is a different port protocol. Telnet is a different protocol, but SSH and Telnet both are used to remote access. SSH port number is 22 and it is encrypted by default. It is a encrypted way. So I connected to my remote server with SSH whatever the data is transmitting and receiving okay no one will understand if they even they capture the packet because we use rsa uh, uh, algorithm to encrypt it okay there is a key system is there to capture the data uh, means decrypting the data we use a key method so telnet telnet is also so remote connectivity but plain text means all the data we are transmitting receiving no encryption again guys smtp pop3 and imap these three protocol for mail communication smtp pop3 imap are used for a mail communication smtp simple max uh, simple mail transmission protocol for sending a mails the like a, it is a all going mail server protocol or to send a mail pop3 and imap is to receive a mail 
TFTP trivial file transfer protocol for remote configuration files upload or download FTP FTP for upload and download of files but TFTP for remote configuration backup or uh, upload or uh, uh, restore files DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol now your mobile phone or laptop is getting an IP address from your Wi-Fi router because of your Wi-Fi router is act like a DHCP server so your devices are getting an IP address from DHCP server you are, you are getting a, an IP address from DHCP server okay 67 68 is a port number DNS domain name system DNS domain name system okay so for example I want to communicate with the w3 schools that Facebook.com, YouTube.com. I don't know the IP address of YouTube.com. So my system send a request to the DNS server to get an IP address of YouTube.com. Which protocol? DNS. It gives an IP address or it will uh, give you a IP address of that particular domain or a host youtube.com www.youtube.com studio.youtube.com mail.google.com dvs.google.com microsoft.com okay so there's whenever you are want to communicate like www.w3schools.com or javatpoint.com when you want to communicate with it don't have an IP address then you will get an IP address from DNS server so domain name system NTP network time protocol already I told it will synchronize NTP server synchronize the times in the machines based on their time zone they follow to follow a yes, same time based on the time zone NTP network time protocol Kerberos AER BER OS Kerberos is a authentication protocol used in a Microsoft Act 2 directory LDAP lightweight directory access protocol 389 also it is a authentication protocol SNMP simple network management protocol simple network management protocol we use in the monitoring monitoring system like you if you want if you want to monitor uh, your infrastructure use SNMP protocol 161 162 port number okay. maybe you will get a doubt sir really they will ask all port numbers protocols and all I listed a, a frequently used protocols and their port numbers yes. better to know it if you are unable to remember please by heart first then try it each and everything by meaning usage anything okay so different ways to remember is there follow that ways one way is better to put it in uh, one place like uh, these two are a uh, web related communication file related communication remote access these three are a uh, mail related communications these two are a uh, IP address related means uh, this is will give assign an IP address to us this is give IP address of someone's server we got an a uh, time synchronization with NTP these two are authentication protocol this protocol specifically used for monitoring never try to remember based on the port numbers like a uh, line up the port numbers and I will read it no that is won't work out guys 
that is a completely by heading type no don't do that kind of by heading always protocols and the port numbers like uh, you want to port number wise 20 21 22 23 24 24 is not there so 25 the next one is uh, 53 67 68 69 88 80 88 okay, then the entire protocol order will be changes so it is always a protocol first then port number port number is representation of protocols in the numerical form so we cannot use the names like a protocol names instead of protocol name we are using port number of a protocol Guys, understand protocols and port numbers. I think everybody's uh, sleeping dead. We have a uh, 20 members, at least 19 is there out of 30, 31, 32. But no one is still not speaking. Yeah, I, I think so. You don't know one point. Okay, okay. No problem. Uh, if you don't speak, I thought you don't understand. And I will, again and again, I will repeatedly explain that one. Okay. That's the point. That's why we are getting delays. I thought you are not understand, no interaction, no questions. And of course, only one person asked me, so please tell me about switch, then I told, but still, that's the point. That's why we are uh, late. Okay. Yeah, we got uh, almost like a half an hour, guys, maximum. So I will complete all these seven layers, give you information so then voice layer will be completed okay so now problem application layer first layer is application layer this is my web browser what is the use of this web browser to communicate or access website okay to communicate or access website so that is so that is a web browser. This is another application to communicate or share the, through this application, right? I can able to talk, I can able to share, I can able to share my screen. We can conduct a meeting. This is also network based application that is a Microsoft Teams. Outlook. I have an Outlook. This Outlook is a mail client application. I can send, receive a mails through this Outlook. Next, FileZilla. I want to upload or download a files using FTP protocol. Using FTP protocol, so I use this FileZilla. See, using FTP protocols, I can send it. Host name means remote server, username and password to connect. And the port number is 21, uh, sorry. FTP 2021 kind of stuff, right? So then we use that one. <coughs> okay, based on VSFTP and all, we can do to put it. Connect it, we can upload the data, we can download the data. Currently, I didn't remember any FTP things. Even I don't have it in my PC. <coughs> now, next one is putty. Where putty? I have two, three putties on my screen. Generally. Yeah, here it is a putty. If I copy more putty things, see it is one putty, another putty, another putty. Why, you know, why I put a more putties in my desktop? Some are uh, newly downloaded, new versions are there, some are old versions are there. This is another putty. Okay, why? Because of in this jungle, I can't able to locate the putty. 
I want to connect it to my remote uh, Linux machines. I can connect it from here. So using SSH protocol, remote my Linux PC, Linux server with SSH server it is. SSH uh, server, port number is 22. My remote server name or a IP address and a protocol is SSH open. Then it asks for username password to connect. We can connect it. Or otherwise, I want to connect. It is a, my remote machine is telnet machine. Give the IP address, port number, open. And also there is other type connectivity also there. Serial type of connectivity is also there. Serial means serial port connectivity or RS-232 connectivity is a serial port. COM port. This is SSH, this is Telnet. Okay. These are all my remote machines. Now these machines are gone. So I have to remove all these things. Okay. So I can use that one or I can use it from here also. No problem. Yeah, one more example. Ping. I can do ping from here, right? So this is my web browser. I do ping command from here. Ping is a network based command and ICMP protocol. Can you do ping from here? Ping from web browser, we can't do it. So application layer is dealing with a application of client and server. Client applications, server applications comes under application layer and protocols we used protocols port numbers clients application server application for example web browser is a client application at web server side there's another application like a com tomcat glassfish httpd okay microsoft internet information service this is a server side application. This is client side application. Client side outlook mail client application it is. And server side server application is there. Microsoft Exchange, Zimra, Squirrel Mail kind of stuff. You have a SSH server. In a client we have a putty app with the SSH protocol we can able to connect. It. You have a remote telnet server is there. You can connect with a telnet using a putty application. You have a FTP server is there. You want to upload or download a files using an application called FileZilla, Qt FTP, Duck FTP stuff. Uh, WinSCP also there. This is also we can use to connect remote system copy data or upload download data ftp is there vsftp is there sftp is there <coughs> scp is also there secure copy scp mean so remote desktop means you have a remotely you have a remote machine is there you want to connect it from your microsoft system simply put a mstc tsc microsoft terminal connection so this is a app to connect your remote machine like a remote machine ip address their username click connect it asks for a password give the password and the encryption certificate will be exchanged and you will get a connected okay so this is a remote desktop connection app so client side we have a applications server side we have an applications server side client side and there is a protocols and the port numbers. This is dealing with by application layer. It is took a nine minutes to complete application layer, but one minute for this thing. No, no. Presentation layer. Sixth layer is presentation layer. Guys, whether you are sending a request, fresh request you are sending and you are getting a reply, right? So you have a data. The data can be is a plain text data. Data is a, a simple text format or a, some other formats like HTML format or maybe a picture format 
or a video format right so or a, some pdf file or jpg file or gif file a streaming media is there so whatever the data it is you have to convert into ascii format so the presentation layer convert the data into ascii format next one is presentation layer will compress the data presentation layer encrypt the data already i said http https telnet ssh so where which protocol is having encryption type means data will be encrypted uh, while it is transmitted so what is the presentation layer do in a presentation layer it encode the data decode the data compression decompression encryption and deencryption that is presentation layer see one minute i said no session layer so session layer look like a small but it is very big one session layer uh, transport layer is very big one actually because the lines are bigger lot of explanation but session layer is also very big okay. session layer is about a create a session guys when i send a request whether it is a ping request or maybe a web request or a file sending request or maybe a mail related request you now when i'm sending a request the traveling is started right we are sending means first one is your uh, client application and uh, your uh, link url protocol everything then presentation layer when you are sending itself if you have a sending a data of course that is a encoded while you are sending it is encoded and um, compressed encrypted and stuff next a new session id will be created a new session id will be created while you are sending okay so this session id will be maintained when it is like you send it finally it reaches the destination your request reach it to destination destination received your request finally it will understand at a application layer right and verify your se session layer here yes, it verifies your session id and of course in application layer understand and it will return to you right so you based on your you send a request finally uh, you received a all packets right so now the then session will be completed for example i close this one then i opening this uh, web page right so this is i send a request to this java t point java t point received my request then giving the data to me now the data is completely uh, loaded still it is running see still it is loading any updates are there so it will load it okay. once it is completed the session is completed uh, i will give you one example also um example is do not refresh page or a press back button okay so i will give you some images you to refresh your memory so confirm submissions kind of stuff you know the first thing is when you are paying amount so in generally so you are to you are purchasing something then it what it will shows you are paid an amount and you are waiting to get a confirmation of payment like secured online payment kind of you know so you are paying something okay so what it will tell do not reload your page or do not uh, press the back button kind of stuff what if you done a refresh the page like this what if you done a refresh the page 
or if you press the back button and come back like i uh, do on this one and this one what will happen when you're doing a payment kind of stuff normally it is not much differences you don't feel but in a payment definitely you feel some difference right point is you are working on a one session the session is there you done a payment payment went to bank bank confirms your payment and your uh, remote server like a amazon or flipkart confirms with it and with the same session id only it will tell you your in the page once with the same session id only it will tell you your yeah, payment is confirmed order is confirmed so delivery date is this one right so your session id is not changing here same session id we are continuing and you're finishing it. That's why do not refresh. Okay, if you refresh, what will happen? You press the refresh button. Okay, you press this refresh button. So what happened? The earlier session ID is there now. It is somewhere it is working and it will be disconnected. A new session will be try to establish. It's try to establish with a new session. Same URL with a different uh, session will be established. Try to establish. So what happened? Your older session is gone somewhere. We don't know what happened. We don't know whether his payment is confirmed or not. A transmission of data is successfully or not. So we don't know your application submission. What happened to this? We don't know. Okay. But it is a new session is there. New session does not know about old session. So no confirmation. Okay, that's why we said uh, then a, a, a certain websites in, in a, while doing something like a payment or submitting an application. Okay, so they said uh, do not refresh. Even it will take some times, little extra time. Just you have to wait. It's more time means you have to refresh that you have to do some other kind of like closing application or checking your bank account or some other cross verification you have to do it. Even sometimes it will take long time. Payment is done. Payment is success, not success. Means amount will be disconnected. Amount will be detected from your bank, but the confirmation of payment won't happen sometimes. So you have to give compliance or do so. We have to check with like whether you are getting money return or not. Okay. Same, you press the back button and forth. Like uh, you want to go back while process is going on. You press the back button means you are disconnect from the current session. And when you press this button, the new again it is you are trying for a new session. See this much of confusion. No words, no sentences, no pictures. But only small line it is. See, it is taken almost more than uh, five minutes. It's almost eight minutes it took. Guys, understand session layer. It establishes a session, maintain the session, and terminate the session once session is completed. If you refresh or press the back button, our internet is disconnected. Okay, network is disconnected. Session will be terminated in middle. Okay. While you are downloading heavy files, you know, while I'm downloading any uh, big files kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, normally nowadays torrents are not there. Okay. The torrents are very difficult to find also. Lot of risk in, in volume, but still, you know, I want to download a uh, Saint voice means Linux Saint voice it is. Not this one. Uh, Saint voice only, but not a wiki Saint voice. Saint voice seven. Okay, so downloads. I want to download this up. It is I went to this and I want to download 
first it is I have to download this one. It is a 4.4 GB. It's a 4.4 GB. Okay. Now it is a 4.4 GB. I may my internet may disconnected before it is completely download. Possibility is there. 4 GB up to 4 GB I downloaded. Last 100 MB or 200 MB is left. Internet is disconnected. Session is expired. Session is expired. So ex session is disconnected. Again, you have to download it from starting. How much painful it is? Some people, I am using a, a Wi Fi internet. Maybe now or later I will download. Some people use mobile data. That is limited data, right? Daily 1 GB. You know, some of my previous batch students earlier at a corona time, you have to do online. Most of them having a mobile data somewhere. Okay. So, you know, mobile data means again they have to recharge 10 GB, 20 GB. This is 4 GB data. Okay. 5 GB data, sir. Then what we do, I will tell use the free download manager or IDM, Internet Download Managers. You can download with it. For example, I'm downloading a very big file. See it is 1.97 GB. For example, almost like a 1 GB or 1.9 GB is downloaded. Only few MB file is left. Internet disconnected. Session is expired. Okay, session is gone. Again, how to continue download? I cannot do it. But this free download manager. Remember, so my uh, progress status, the download session IDs, everything it will remember. Okay, it will has a tracking. So I can continue. You know, some downloaders I've done three, four days. Even one month download is also have done with the torrents. So how it is possible with this? <laughs> uh, means one G, that is very 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 so many days back I have one download one month I have taken that is Windows Vista okay Windows Vista yeah point is guys so the download uh, some are at 10 MB some are 10 GB files also there the point is these are uh, save the session IDs, progress, tracking, and this there. I download a uh, 100 MB today. Tomorrow I will download uh, some 200 MB. Based on my internet thing. Even internet is not, not stable. Internet is not stable. So I can download one by one. Like this. Okay. So that is the uh, main main point I am trying to say about a session layer. Okay, so see nothing is there. It will take in more. Yeah, it will take little bit time guys. Just uh, you have to wait another 15 20 minutes. I will complete. We are already in a transport layer. Tomorrow no class. Tomorrow Saturday you don't have a class and Monday we can meet again. Okay, so once we completed. So again Monday. But meantime, please prepare all the things what we I, what we discuss. Please go through it. If you want any material to pre, for your interview for tomorrow and day after tomorrow also, I will share few things. Okay. Transport layer provide end to end connectivity. What are the data you have? So the data will be chopped into small pieces. That process we call it as a segmenting. The process we call it as a segmenting. And once you are put a chopping, once you are done a chopping the pieces, we put a numbering on it. We put a numbering on it for a sequencing purpose. Numbering and sequencing we do it. This is my standard example. Hello, how are you? So I divided this data into four parts and I put a numbering on it. Guys, this is for our understanding. Not really how it is look like and all. We don't mind about it, but this is how to understand. I put a numbering on it, sequence numbering on it. 
Now, for example, I send a data. So A to B transmission. This is source. This is destination. I send a first packet. Destination received. And destination send an acknowledgement. I received a first packet. Second packet I send and second is received and the destination send uh, yes acknowledgement for a two. Third packet I send and it is not received. I didn't receive any acknowledgement. Whether it is received or not, I don't know, but I didn't receive any acknowledgement for a third packet. Fourth packet I send, fourth is received and I got a acknowledgement for a fourth. So it meaning is the destination received a first packet, second packet, and fourth packet. It means hello, how you. Now source realize he didn't receive a acknowledgement for a third packet. So then it will send a third packet again. Third is received, and the acknowledgement is sent. So now it is finally received a packet, but the data will be changed like a hello, how you are. Now this is the uh, packet arrangement is different. So your message will say different. Now what it will do, it rearrange the packet again because it's having a sequence is having a sequence. You didn't receive a packet or one packet is damaged or error on the packet. So source send a packet. So destination received or not received or corrupted. So if destination not send an acknowledgement for the packet, so source will send the packet again. And these packets will be rearranged in the proper order. Get a data as a same that means you rearrange it. This method we call it as a error correction also. So error correction is done by transport layer in this way. And it will multiplex and demultiplex the TCP UDP wise. Yes, lot of people will get confused in TCP UDP. TCP transmission control protocol UDP user datagram protocol. TCP transmission control protocol UDP user datagram protocol. What is this TCP UDP? There is nothing it is. You have a seen of a protocols. That's a protocols learning is important. We have seen lot of protocols here. HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, SSS, Telnet, RDP, SMTP, POP3, IMAP, TFTP, DHCP, DNS. NTP like that we have seen some protocols and their port numbers also. <coughs> some protocols are TCP type protocols. Some protocols are UDP type protocols. TCP type protocols and UDP type protocols. OK. Some protocols are TCP type protocol. Some are UDP type protocol. Some are both. Some are both. So you can search in Google like uh, um, in Wikipedia kind of stuff or any other textbooks you can search. So TCP and uh, UDP protocols. OK, so always there is a some differences and an explanation is there. I'm not going with that one. Only thing is list of protocols based on TCP and UDP. Okay. So I put a list of networking protocol. Okay. So list of networking protocols. Okay. You can list it. Or you can go to any 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 website. You can list some protocols, but when you see this uh, no, no, it is networking layers, layer, layer, layer. OK, OK. It's each protocol explanation is given in this some manage engine dot com off manager website only. OK. 
This is geek for geek. Uh, we don't uh, we can go to table kind of stuff search next time so table format protocols tables i'll try double three schools also there and no, no, not this this is trying to wikipedia This is port number and protocol. Uh, it is waste of time. Okay. The point is, guys, some protocols are TCP type, some are UDP type. That's it only, nothing more. TCP type protocol behavior is like this acknowledgement based protocols. TCP type protocols are Acknowledgement based protocols. Behavior is like, like this. For example, you send a packet, destination received a packet, and destination give an acknowledgement telling that I received a packet. Okay. And source send a packet, destination received a packet, destination is telling I received a packet by sending acknowledgement to the source if in case you send a packet destination is not received or maybe something has happened destination not send an acknowledgement for that packet the source thing source thing destination is not received a packet again it will try to send the packet when destination receives it means destination send an acknowledgement to the source source receive an acknowledgement meaning is destination is received a packet this type means it is a in a tcp type protocols knows destination is received a packet tcp type protocols knows destination is received a packet if not received it will send it again how it is not by acknowledgement. Okay, that's why TCP type protocols are reliable protocols. Reliable protocols, connection oriented protocol. Again, guys, lot of people will get a other question that is the connection oriented means is it a wired? Even my lecturer in my college told this kind of stuff example of tcp is a connection oriented means if you use a wire it is a tcp if you are using wireless means wi-fi network type it is okay it is a connection less protocol connection less means it is a wireless both are wrong both are wrong concept guys I'm using HTTP. HTTP is a TCP type protocol, right? I'm connecting with the Wi-Fi, means wireless. So my TCP become UDP or what? No. Connection oriented means two-way confirmation connection is there. Means you are sending a packet destination received and you know destination is received for example i will ask like a sir do you understand do you understand then if you say uh, understand or some question or uh, acknowledging that you received my message that is called a connection oriented okay i am speaking and whether you listening or not i don't know and i am continue speaking without checking whether you are received or not. I don't know whether you received or not. That is called a connection less. Connection less. It's a one way direction. 
we don't know whether destination received or not. So that's why it is here connection oriented and connectionless. That's it only. So UDP type protocol. That certain protocols are UDP type protocols. There is a source and destination. Source send a packet. Destination may received a packet. Source send it. Destination received it. And we don't know destination is received or not also. So we are sending a packet. Even a destination is not able to receive a packet. We don't know. We have to keep sending a packet. We don't know. Destination is received or not received. We don't know. We are sending a packet. That's it. So this is why we call it as a non reliable protocols and connectionless protocols. It is a behavior of the protocol. TCP type protocol behavior, UDP type protocol behavior. It is not doing anything. <coughs> it is nothing doing with uh, anything with this uh, wire or wireless or Wi Fi LAN connection. Nothing. Okay. So TCP type protocol, transmission control protocol, user datagram protocol. TCP is an acknowledgement based protocol. UDP is a not no acknowledgement based. So it is not based on acknowledgement. So there is other explanation. Original synchronization mapping is there, but I don't go to that much. I'm going to very simple. Example of TCP type protocol or HTTP, SMTP, FTP, SNMP kind of stuff. UDP protocol is TFTP, Trivial File Transfer Protocol. Okay, so TFTP, DHCP, DNS are UDP type protocols. TCP type protocols are reliable protocols. Why? Because of reliable protocols and connection oriented protocols. Why? Because of source knows destination received a packet through the acknowledgement from the destination. User datagram protocol is non reliable protocols and connection less protocols. Why? Because of source does not know the destination received a packet or not. OK, in TCP type protocols, source knows destination received a protocol or destination received a packet or not. If destination is not received or destination is not sending any acknowledgement for the packet, so source will send the packet again. That is the TCP UDP. Guys, anyone understand what is TCP UDP? Yeah, only three is there. No one is talking. I am only taking it. I'm telling only I'm myself. I'm teaching that one. Or everybody left. Okay. Flow control. Another uh, responsibility of transport flow control means you are sending and receiving a packet, right? So while you are sending, make sure that destination can able to receive that many packets at a time. How many packets destination can able to receive at a time? So that is estimate and send according to it. Guys, data in the any OSA layer is packet data unit. A packet data in it. Any layer, what are the data format it is? What is the name of the data? What is the content in the data? In the layer, what is the content? In the layer, that is a PDU, packet data unit. So transport layer, what are the data is earlier? That, 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 that PDU will be added with a TCP header, which contains information about your segmenting, numbering, TCP, UDP information there, your protocol information and are added to your PDO. That total we call it as a segment. The segment is sent to the network layer. Uh, seven. I think very uh, good. I will complete it, guys. Just five minutes. Okay. Network layer. Network because if I don't uh, if I disconnect here means again from starting I have to teach and again that's why I'm not able to disconnect it. 
okay that's the point i can revise but uh, this can uh, again from starting voice layer again headache again take time network layer network layer is dealing with the routed protocols and routing protocols ipv4 ipv6 are a best example for a routed protocols your ip address logical addressing is in a network layer that's why router is an example for a network layer because router understand ip address routing protocols are a ip uh, routing protocols are used to send a packet to the destination and uh, routing protocols will tell you how to reach the destination okay so we are uh, from one network to another network we are sending a packet but we don't know how to reach the destination the routing protocols will tell you how to reach the destination so your network layer is dealing with your routed and routing protocols like a ip addresses and a routing protocols routing information so network layer at network layer the segment will be added with a network header which is nothing but source ip address and destination ip meaning is source ip destination ip address is added to your segment and it is originally named called a packet or packet data unit name is packet in the network layer this packet will send to data link layer data link layer is is uh, with a llc and mac layer two layers are there in data link layer two layers are there one is llc another one is a mac layer llc link logical link control actually dealing with the wan protocols okay dealing with the wan protocol like a ppp sdlc frame relay mpls so for connecting wan communication we need a wan protocols so data link layer is dealing with the wan protocol so for example you are communicating within the lan means llc nothing nothing is doing with llc you are communicating outside of lan means you are communicating over the internet in through wan protocols the packet will send right so mac address you know already mac address every nic having a mac address media access control it is also called as a physical address 48 bit 12 hexadecimal in data link layer so source mac address destination mac address as a data header will add it to your packet plus data tail is a crc will be added see source mac address destination mac address packet plus crc is equal to yes it's a frame what is crc cyclic redundancy check it is used to error checking remember guys data link layer for error checking transport layer error correction error checking means while you are transmitting a data data may corrupted so it will check the data is not corrupted or corrupted data is corrupted to drop the packet data is not corrupted then accept the packet okay so that is a frame the frame is contains source mac address destination mac address packet and crc it will send to your physical layer the physical layer is actually physical connectivity it converts your frame into the bit stream the bit stream convert the data into electrical signal or a radio signal or a light waves depends upon your physical media or physical device right normally we are using a wide connectivity then it is electrical signal to transfer the data through this wire like rj45 kind of stuff ethernet we are using utp stp electrical signal of course our laptop mobile phones we are all using a wi-fi kind of stuff it is a radio signal of course you are using a servers in a certain place like a server kind of stuff so fiber optical way of connectivity devices it is then it is a light waves so these are the total seven layers see source and destination guys from source while you are sending you are sending like a from first is application layer presentation layer then session layer transport network data link and physical layer and physical to physical connectivity anyway through water directly or indirectly so when you are receiving 
physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer, and application layer. It is while sending application layer to physical layer, when receiving physical layer to application layer. So that is the thing in the network. So this is about your OSC layer. Of course, on Monday, again, I will explain in a short form or a uh, other form like this. Uh, um, we'll try, okay? And of course, we'll see OSC layer, TCP layer comparison that time, and as well as a OSC layer wise troubleshooting and IP addresses. Study well, guys, don't waste your time. So technically, three things are very important. Your basic, uh, what is a service desk is very important, okay? And networking components are important. Networking, networking, all whatever we discuss plus IP address. IP address is missed, okay? So plus IP address is important, okay? And next one is very important one is, yeah. How to check IP address, how to check MAC address, difference between IP and MAC address, and uh, how to check your system configuration, what is your system configuration, and the personal questions. Okay. Yeah, totally seven members are uh, there. 